With a yo-ho-ho, -ho, it's Taylor the Toaster. Welcome back to Let's Play Inazuma 11 to Firestorm. Now this episode will be dedicated to traveling to Cloister Divinity to have a look at the new school, but quickly before I do so, I had a request in the comments. Well, not necessarily a request, but I was definitely told in the comments on part six, the one with the buff deer in the thumbnail, that, um, he basically listed some of the best random recruits in the game. Now I'm more the kind to go for players that I like than players that are good. But I want to heed his advice on this occasion because Mac is gonna show him what you got. That, that, that quote was kind of in the wrong order. Yes, because little Mac is such a good player, he actually requires you to beat him on two different occasions in his battle. He's that good and i tell you what, I won't say what the shooting moves in his moveset are in case I end up using the guy on in a few matches but they're outrageously good. He basically has access to some of the greatest shooting moves in the game so he, he actually needs to do three football matches in a row before he finally gives in and actually joins our team. Sean's not using his alter ego at the moment so he might have a bit of difficulty scoring but if I beat him for a third and final time Max should finally join us. There's one of his moves for starters. He's got back tornado the moment he joins us so he would be a suitable replacement for Axel, basically having the blue version of Fire Tornado. Let Phil know I have this. So uh, the other good players that were suggested by... I'll put the name on the screen to make sure, but I'm pretty sure he's called Darren Martin. Yeah, he left uh, several names in the comments, which he suggested, and I noticed that Mac, A, had the most interesting moves, and B was available right now. So I've picked him up. Now let's head to Cloister Divinity. Also a bit of background, this guy, Mac, was part of the track and field club in the original Inazuma 11. And oh, the bus, it blossoms in the wind as we head to Johto. Let's heal because I just had to do three football matches in a row against Mac, but hey, at least he's mine now. I can definitely see him scoring some goals, even if his bio was a bit plain. It's just, oh, you're not fast enough to see this guy move. Whoa. But here we are on Cloister Divinity, and indeed there's already players on the pitch. I, I, I was tempted to say, oh, look how beautiful it is, but, you know, I, I can't just say that for every new area. I've already made one Hitler joke in this Let's Play, so no more. But it does sound like something out of Downfall. Anyway, I need to stop voice acting. That line and that line alone. Otherwise, it's just going to go straight back to downfall. And no, I'm not doing that one either. Otherwise, I'll bloody ruin my microphone. Oh my god, four all caps lines in a row from Mark Evans. Cloth eared beggars. That's <laughs> more like it. I, I really relate to Sean Frost as a character, you know. Not only does he just say the most British stroke Scottish thing. I'm sorry, but that laugh does not sound like 
Yuck, yuck, yuck. I guess you won't get that because I've uh, zoomed into the anime cutscenes in my Let's Play, but on the actual DS bottom screen, the reason they're widescreen is because they've got subtitles underneath. And the subtitle for that laugh was yuck, yuck, yuck. Which it didn't sound like at all. But yes, Captain, may I ask what seemed to be the trouble? <laughs> Talk about two faced. Like a devil and an angel in one. Ganyan, these people are visitors here. Are you alright? No. But don't look at me. It's not my fault if they go around falling in holes. Banyan! And, well, while he's gone. Please accept my humblest apologies. It is my fault for not keeping my players under control. I am Screen Kick, captain of the football team here at Cloister Divinity. Captain of the football team? You mean that that boy plays football? I, I read it as, do you mean that boys play football? Just as a kind of opposite to what? Tori wants to join us? I didn't know girls play football. What can I do for you? We're the Ryman Junior High Football Club. Ah, uh, yes, Ryman. You won the football frontier, did you not? What brings you to Cloister Divinity? They're not exactly overjoyed to see us, are they? We got such a welcome at Alpine. Well, well, in that case, I guess I'll just have to recruit more people from Alpine instead of this place. Attack! Ah, uh, yes, of course. So you do know about it? Well, we're on a pre we're on a quest to put together a football team that can beat Alias Academy, and we want to help you take on Epsilon tomorrow because we still haven't seen any sort of display of their power. After all, we do not intend to play Epsilon. What? You're not going to play them? No, we are not. We use football as a means to train our minds and bodies. We do not use it to prove our superiority over anyone. We shall explain to them that we will not be standing against them and withdraw from the match. W withdraw? That Squirtle side special in Brawl! <laughs> what are you talking about? We've tried talking sense to him. It don't work. But it's because you have hatred in your hearts. H hatred? Purge your mind of all selfish thought, and there is nothing you can't communicate. Ha! Huh. Yeah! These people are weird. So we'll let them get back to their training, but... Hmm, don't you think playing against the winners of the football frontier would be a good way to train yourselves? I'm not talking about a match, just... A demonstration of styles, shall we say. Well? Hmm. It is an interesting proposition. Very well. We accept your offer. So basically, in order to get a match with these guys, we just needed to trick them into it. We will not play football with you. However, we will participate in a football-style demonstration of, of styles. Very good, Lena. You are useful after all. Bunyan, I can see you hiding over there. Get to the pitch and help. Yeah, so the, the, the backstory that I didn't read out loud, Banyan is a member of that team, but he doesn't actually play football with them. A, because they don't really do matches, and B, because he's only a substitute anyway. Just, <laughs> he has drawn all over it. He seems a very out of place in this area. I mean, he, he definitely looks the part. Uh, stamina will give that to Tori, I guess. Stamina's not too important because the more you level up, the less important stamina becomes. Stamina only matters in the start of the game. Once you get to a certain level, you have enough stamina to last the whole match. I'm not sure if I've even demonstrated my players running out of stamina before. Yeah, but if you do too much with certain players, then they can get tired and lose all their power and running speed, but it, it just doesn't really happen. So I'm having a little look around Cloister Divinity before we get into the match. They're basically all talking about Banyan. He's clearly the star of this place, despite not being on the team. 
just because he trapped us in a hole. Let's play the demonstration of styles. Are you prepared in mind and soul? Yes! Then let the demonstration begin! Okay, so kicking into gear, I will have a quick flick through the Cloister Divinity players' bios just to see if there's any funny ones, and then we'll get straight into the real match. Ah, yeah! So, a uh, backstory from Lena, this is basically the greatest team to not enter the football frontier. The reason they didn't enter the football frontier is obviously because they don't believe in the idea of competition. It should just be used for training mind and soul and such. Gonna use Sean in defence, so let's move him back here, I guess. Have we, no, I, for, I forgot to move Mac into the starting lineup. Never mind. I was gonna give him a go, but Cheney will have to do, I guess. So we'll have a quick flick through what these guys have to say then. Kick, the team captain, is a goalkeeper, just like Mark himself, and his ability and tactical acumen are both in heavy demand. I'm not sure what acumen is supposed to mean, but yeah, as you can tell, the, all of the designs here are just going to be very traditional people. Ernest Bookworm is his name. Oh, I would make so many I am mean references. If any of you actually knew what that was, but I guess on the off chance, I am mean, and you are a bookworm. Uh, I guess I can demonstrate it visually. Ah, you may have outsmarted me this time, bookworm, but I'll be back. I am mean never quits. You'll see. <laughs> But um, yeah, so to continue the topic of what I was talking about before it started getting to, into, you know, Dialogue City, Sean Frost is a character that I can relate to quite a lot, because his dialect, I definitely don't speak in the same way as Sean Frost. That's why everything he says makes me laugh, but oh god. Sometimes I'll go out on my way just to try and speak like that because I think it's funny. If it's cold, I'll definitely say, Eee, it's nippy out there, lad. But, um, yeah, he has been shown throughout the game to have good intentions and always want to prove that he's capable of something but can accidentally come across as quite insensitive and... He also gets all the women he pleases, despite not really caring that much about it. Yeah, I, I just feel in Sean Frost, not only is he one of my overall favourite Inazuma characters, he's definitely the most that's like me. And yeah, it's just, it's just a celebration, really, of British gaming, I feel. I know this is a Japanese game set in Japan, but because it wasn't released in America, the dubbing is quintessentially British, and they just went all out with Sean, making him sound as UK-ish as, as possible. The game would have... Oops, that's not the right move. Oh, I couldn't afford Wyvern Crash anyway. The game would have needed a complete redubbing if it were to be released in America. Look at this move! He can actually breathe fire! And that is enough to stop the goal. But yeah, it's just, while I am a British person that can appreciate British dialect, it, it raises my enjoyment of Sean more because I can actually hear some of these phrases be seen, be said in day-to-day -day life, and I wouldn't find them in any other video game. That guy realistically could have had a doppelganger considering he didn't have a visible face. He can still afford another Flame Breath kick, but I, I could fire up, but I don't want to <laughs> because the music. So let's just go Psycho Shot. But talking about the subject of releasing this game in America, it doesn't appear.
appear as though it's ever going to happen. Which is really disappointing because the original Inazuma 11 was released. Oh yeah, the move leveled up. Was released on the eShop in America for about $19.99. You should definitely consider investing in it. But yeah, and they gave the game a complete American redubbing with voice acting and all, released it on the eShop, promoted it into in a Nintendo Direct, and I got all my friends to buy it, and everyone seemed to like it for the most part. I really thought that they would get the second game, this, this game would sell well enough. But in yeah, it's just three years later, the kind of not happened. I know that soccer isn't really a popular thing in America necessarily, but America got the Professor Layton cameo in their dub, which we didn't, so that could have helped. If you go on the US Miiverse community for Inazuma 11 1, that is all you see. It's just people bragging that they found Layton. That's actually how I got the image to put it in my Let's Play when I realised I couldn't showcase it on my own game. I had to take people, people's me versus screenshots. Not half bad, you lot. Let's keep it up. Ha, yeah, only in the end will we truly know who is stronger. And yeah, no no dialogue in between. I It's it's quite usual for Inazuma to have a bit of dialogue in between the halves. But now we're just going to carry on talking about the possibility of a US release. Yeah, that. What I mean, well, what more is there to say? I yes, that's what I meant to talk about. I did buy an NTSC 2DS, and I have played the American dub of Inazuma 11, and it was really helpful because it refreshed my knowledge of the game, so that I knew when to end parts. They fired up, so I'm gonna fire up. It made me know what I was going to be doing in each episode of the Let's Play, where the important dialogue was going to be, how long I should make each episode. It was just helpful to have a practice LP, because it wasn't the same as just playing the same game twice in one year, because it was a different dub with different graphics, and it was able to show me the differences between the two versions, so it was really helpful. I did imagine that given that I owned an NTSC 2DS with Inazuma 11 on it, I was gonna get the chance to play the American <laughs> I forgot what a failed flame breath looks like. It just slow-mo hits him in the face. <laughs> I suppose burning the ball wouldn't do the best job of stopping something's momentum. It is just air. But yeah, when I got an American 2DS, I did imagine I was going to get to play an American dub of the entire Inazuma 11 trilogy, not just one game. Because <laughs> that is literally all I have done on my NTSC 2DS. I did buy The Legend of Zelda A Link Between Worlds while I was in New York, intending to play that on that console, but... Now that it's part of the Nintendo Select range, meaning it's less than £15 in the UK, I'd, if I want to play that game, I'd rather just buy it again and play it on my new Nintendo 3DS XL for an enhanced 3D larger screen experience. So that 2DS basically existed just to let me play the American version of Inazuma 1 as a bit of Let's Play practice and knowledge building, because that's where I discovered a game-breaking glitch in the original Inazuma, where I was able to re remove Jude from the team as soon as I got him, and it did all kinds of crazy stuff, like a cutscene where we were learning the Inazuma break, but Jude was just missing from the cutscene, and the ball was kicked by no one. Oh, they're going to take a shot. Let's go for the first time in the series, Marge in the hand. I guess this is alright, because we get to see the opposing side's shooting move. I am not gonna sing, but their move is called Kung Fu Fighting. I didn't sing it, but I still said it in the same kind of pace <laughs> as the song. Anyway, but yeah, so it doesn't look like America is gonna get Inazuma 11 too, which is a great shame, but 
I suppose it works out for me in some ways, because I've definitely been having comments on every single episode from a new viewer called Gangu Eevee, who had watched, who had played the entirety of Inazuma 1 on her 3DS in America, then obviously couldn't play this without importing it, so it's brought attention to this Let's Play. You could say that I would probably get attention on the Let's Play anyway if the game was released in America this year, but I've given up hope of it happening. At least you Americans get Yokai Watch literally over half a year before we do. I'm actually right up to the final boss of Yokai Watch at the time of recording this video. But of course, you Americans have already got the sequel confirmed for localization, which is a bit better. <laughs> I don't even know, well I do know why it took us so long to get Yoko Watch, it's because they wanted to coincide with the UK release of the anime stroke cartoon, but they didn't even redub the game for us, like America's Inazuma 11, that got a full American voiceover, but we just got the same old American voices in Yoko Watch. I was disappointed by that fact, but the game's still enjoyable, I quite like it. Anyway, we beat Cloyster, which is a Pokemon I've never used on my team, but it was the entire reason I got Fire Red instead of Leaf Green. I'm much more of a Leaf Green kind of person, but I wanted to use Cloyster, and in the end I ended up using a Dewgong, so totally failed! That was most impressive display of skill. You truly live up to your reputation. And your special moves, they ring down like a punishing storm. They have clearly undergone some very punishing training, have they not, elder brother? Indeed they have, younger brother. Please, you must teach us our training regime. A fine idea. I implore you, stay here a while and let us learn from you. I think we'll take up on that offer. We're going to be staying at Cloister a little longer. We're not just going to, you know, leave. And they get a free feast. Oh, students like me are very jealous of free food. I wouldn't be so sure if I were you. Wouldn't be so sure of what. I guess they were saying they can beat Ape Epsilon if we can beat Cloister Divinity. Yeah, we're the best. Please enjoy the spectacle we have prepared. Wow, cool. Such precision. It's like watching soldiers on parade. Timmy would have loved to see this. D did I miss something? Where's the feast? Is it just a feast of entertainment instead? Hungry, are ya? Here, get your laughing gear around this. A, a rice ball? Yum! How do you like my special super duper ultra mega spicy recipe? It'll put hairs on your chest. <laughs> yuck, 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 Very funny. Banyan. That's it. I'm sick of that little monster. <laughs> oh, how harsh. And of course, Jude has to make a passing remark because they're just the most closely bonded brother and sister in the entirety of fiction. Yeah, Mark is saying that we got our techniques from the legendary Inazuma 11. That is something that created a bit of confusion for me when I first played this game. I thought, what? But in the last game we officially became the new Inazuma 11, didn't we? And that's the name of the game. Why isn't it our team name? Why are we still rhyming? But I guess now that so many of our team members have essentially died, it it would be unfair to call ourselves the Inazuma 11 anyway. Hmm? Who are you, sir? That was kind of rude and kind of not. Still shouted, who are you, but didn't... still said, sir. But yes, this is their coach who was completely absent for the whole match. In fact, he was gone for six months. He's a brilliant coach. I'm 
so old that I cannot even phrase sentences anymore. I entered the football frontier because it was my granddad's dream, and my dream, to get to the final of it. Maybe your dream has been realized. What now? Once you defeat these alien invaders, what then? What, what then? Ah. Uh... Your love of football is clearly unsurpassed, and your heart is pure and true. If you are to truly grow, why not explore other avenues, other possibilities? You mean... summer other than football? I can't bear with the thought! Playing something other than foot. No, he's saying Mark could try something other than being a goalkeeper. Let me give you this special move. It is a shooting move. The Megaton Head. And he slowly awards it to us. We get the manual for Megaton Head. He's kind of saying we should give it to Mark, but believe it or not, you don't actually have to. Megaton Head? That sounds brilliant! What kind of move is it? It is the perfect move for one who has experience as a goalkeeper. Watching you play just now, my instinct told me you would be able to put it to good use. I am going to give it to Mark, seeing as, you know, they're kind of suggesting it very clearly. But you don't actually have to give Megaton Head to Mark. Megaton Head is actually the first example of a move in this game that levels up on a different schema to simply Dragon Crash, Dragon Crash 1, then Dragon Crash 2. And instead, moves such as Megaton Head can actually level up five times in a different way. And also, Cloyster Divinity's coach features a additional service which I have never really needed to use, ever. It basically lets you transfer moves from one player to another. But anyway, we beat Cloyster Divinity in this match, so next time we're going to have another look around and talk to everybody. I know that doesn't sound too exciting, but I'm sure something will happen. So do come back.